Hi Gil Knight, welcome to my channel. This is my full review of Avengers Endgame. Joining me for this review are my parents. My parents, please introduce yourself and say what grade you give the movie. I'm Professor Policy and I give the movie an A+. Plus. Hi, I'm Star Lantern and I give the movie an A. And I give the movie a B+. Plus. Avengers Endgame certainly won't be the last Marvel Cinematic Universe film, but the story is presented as a grand finale for the 11 years of movies plus TV shows plus uh, companion pieces and various other uh, miniature media. This movie is the big send-off as it transitions from uh, the past 11 years to hopefully even more better and greater films to come. Now each of us uh, enjoy these movies overall, but we each approach the film in a different sort of way. For instance, well, I um, enjoy going to the movies to um, just have a fun experience at the movies, so I approached it as going to see a fun experience, and I did enjoy it because it was a lot of fun. Although I'm not a great um, follower of the superheroes, I just know the basic ones from my childhood, like Superman and Batman, Wonder Woman. <laughs> After that, it's you know kind of above my league, but I still enjoy it. <laughs> oh my! Well, in my case, I am a great big comic book uh, fan. I've been watching, I've been reading comic books since childhood, and uh, I I went I went to the movies to see how it all came together and uh, how how it would work. And it, it was pretty good in general. Yes, and of course I've been following this as much as I possibly can without being too obsessed about it. And as you can tell by our grades, we did love them overall, but with a big movie like this, there's many things that we wanted to discuss about it. Now normally in my reviews, I say the couple of things I liked about the movie, then a couple of things I didn't like about the movie. But with our various topics and interpretations, we're going to do it a different way. Instead, we're going to do uh, blocks of topics uh, throughout this review, and then at the very end, we'll give a quick uh, mention of why we gave the grades we gave. So with that in mind, sit back, relax, as we explore Avengers Endgame. The first topic we're going to talk about is time travel, how tra time travel was used in a movie. It turned out for me, and I'm sure many others, to be a very confusing um, pr process. Like when the Ancient One was talking to uh, Bruce Banner that if you just take the stone and then do what you gotta do and then just put it back in the exact same spot, everything was gonna be alright. I don't think it was. Um, also, um, seeing, seeing others, especially yourself, uh, to me was affecting the timeline and at the end, can, at the end when um, Captain America was with his girlfriend and, and he got old and everything. To me, that's still messing with time in some way. So, time lots of um, um, things that happened, of course, the getting these stones, to me, disrupted the timelines in, in little ways. And I think in the future movies, they, they, I think they, they should bring this out. Um, the timeline was confusing to me in that this. And told them you can go to the past and you can see yourself, but make sure you don't meet yourself or interact with yourself. And then I saw the Hulk, he saw himself, so he did not interact, he just looked at himself. But then Nebula and Captain America actually interacted with themselves, so I didn't know what was supposed to happen. So um, that part was confusing to me because I didn't know what was supposed to happen. And myself, as much as I love superhero movies, I love time travel movies even more. So I understood generally what they were trying to say about the rules of time travel, even though time travel doesn't really exist. There are lots of rules and theory about time travel. But for me, the biggest, biggest, hugest thing that ruins this movie for me is that they talk about Back to the Future and disrespect Back to the Future Flat out saying, oh, so Back to the Future is a bunch of BS. And then they go to the big tropes uh, and pop points from Back to the Future. 
one of the main points of Back to the Future is going to the past and meeting your parents before you're born, and that's what Tony Stark does. He meets his dad right before he's born. It's ridiculous. Or another uh, part was uh, Mighty McFly wanting to hopefully save Doc uh, from the fate in the future. So Thor, he meets his mom and he wants to warn her, but like, no, 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 I, I'll be okay. And it's like, you're using Back to the Future while disrespecting uh, Back to the Future, not to mention disrespecting all these other time travel movies that they said by name. And, you, and sure, you basically want to uh, have your own time travel rules, but then you have Nebula kill her past self, and it's like, what? And now Gamora, okay, you had to find a way to bring back Gamora, but Gamora was taken before she even met the Guardians. So how does that work? So like, yeah, time might just work that way. Time has worked that way. Well, you need to tell me how time works because, you know, they're confused and all. And if I'm studying time travel movies like crazy, including all those other films they mentioned, you'll be able to be clear of what you're going to do. I still like the movie overall, but they're, oh, disrespect to the Back to the Future. I love Back to the Future. It is my favorite movie franchise of all time, no pun intended. So yeah, you, you just trample all over your own timeline and disrespect the gold standard of time travel movies. No. No. The next topic we'll discuss is the runtime of the movie. Three hours I thought was going to be too long for me. Um, two hours is about the length of time that I can stay at a movie and then I start to fall asleep. So I thought I was going to fall asleep at this movie, but um, I didn't, and I was asking um, my son, I said, oh, I said, is it over already? He said, yeah. I said, oh, I said, well, that seems to go by fast. I said to myself, I wonder if I missed anything. So when I went to back to see it the second time, I said to myself, whoa, well, I didn't miss anything, and it still went by fast, so I knew I really enjoyed the movie. Okay, for, uh, for me... Um, the first time I, I, um, I saw the movie, it was dreadfully slow. It seemed like they took a lot of time meticulously reviewing each movie that had gone before to build up for you to understand where the movie was going toward the end game. Uh, I mean, I was so bored, I, I, I was choosing to be, had, I was thinking of either leaving or just leaving. And then gradually it did build up. And then at the end, when I had to sit sit through the credits, and they did not show a trailer or anything at the end, I was so fired up. Fortunately, I was inside the theater house because I would have exploded. I was too angry for words. For, second time I saw the movie, it moved a little better. Um, the, the, the scenes were better. It made sense. The fight scene at the end was spectacular. And they had a trailer. Because if they had not had a trail this time, I would have gone downstairs and asked for my money back. Even though she didn't pay for it. Even though I didn't pay for it, I would have asked her. <laughs> I would have demanded that you had tell them to give, give you your money back that you spent on me. Because I was real hot and mad that they did not have that in thing. Mm -hmm. Because I have uh, in trailer, in scene, whatever his name is, I was hot and mad. Mm -hmm. But I, I stayed a lady. <laughs> yeah, so we did see the movie twice, and I uh, felt the three hours, but not in a bad way. I go to movies a lot, obviously, so I value my time. And one of the things I can tell whether I'm enjoying it or not is if by, like, say, the first third or 20 minutes or so, I'm going to look at my watch, see how long it takes. So I guess I was looking at my watch, but just to see uh, the progress of time, as opposed to, like, Ugh, when is this going to be over? When is this going to be over? Now, uh, to her point, we're saying how it felt uh, drawn out in the beginning. Uh, I think you were just ready for just action, 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 as opposed to uh, them rebuilding basically uh, the whole MCU in one film. So, is that would you say that you sort of like uh, weren't expecting that? But having seen the second time, like, okay, I get it, and you're a lot more comfortable uh, with it. Uh, that's kind of it, but, but I wasn't there to see the action, action, action. I was there to see what was the latest installment to, to make it the end game. It felt like I was sitting in, in, my, in the classroom and doing the, uh, what's that at the end of when you summarize it? it, it said the, the first part when you're doing the different movies, excerpts for the different movies, it felt like a summary. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is re, a remembering summary. Remember this happened? 
You remember this happened? You remember that happened? Yes, I remember. Get to the get to the meat of you know, <laughs> get to the meat of the movie. Mm -hmm. And gradually and eventually you did. Right. And it was worth it. But it was long. The first time. <laughs> and to her point about the uh in credit scene, there is no in credit scene, but there uh is a trailer for the upcoming Spider Man movie that was placed in two weeks after the initial run of the movie. And that disappointed me because I liked how this movie doesn't have any type of in credit scene. Again, it's presented as the grand finale, so a finale shouldn't have some type of teaser or more to come. It should feel like an ending. Furthermore, as I said, I spent a lot of time with the movies, so I don't want to spend 20 minutes of watching trailers before the movie, three hours of watching the movie, and then another three minutes of watching a commercial for something else. I want to go home. I want to get going. So I don't want after trailers to become a thing. Trailers are just getting longer and longer, more and more. It used to be 15 minutes, then it's 20 minutes. There was recently two weeks ago where I was 30 minutes worth of trailers and welcome to this theater. Enjoy the show. She looked out for the actress and like, just get to the movie, please. <laughs> So yeah, I don't want after trailer things to become a thing. I want the ending to feel like an ending as it was, and in one way or other, I don't want that. But for at least I made her happier about the experience overall, so she's a fan of it, I'm not, and he just was along for the ride, I imagine. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I think it's the fault of the, um, the, the uh, people behind the movies. They had got, got people trained to sit and sit through all those credits and then see something else. Okay, because like you said, it used to be just a treat, you know, once in a while. But now it has, it has gotten to the point where it's such an air act automatically happened that you become like the um, um, test subject, you know. And you know it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I want to see it's coming. So you, you've, gotten, you've gotten used to it. And the, the first time when you didn't see it, it was like, like a shock. What do you mean? There's no... There's, there's, there's no end scene, okay? And then the second time I, I saw it, and it was when I was like, ah, oh, there it is. Now I can, okay? That's the cherry on top. Okay, now the movie is over. Bye. But no, we've been programmed by, over and over again through different movies to sit for that scene at the end of the movie. So, don't take our cake away. <laughs> That's my opinion. So I asked my son to make me a list of the characters so that I could follow along. And so this is the list that he made. And you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six pages long. And um, I read it, and it's um, still kind of, after reading it, I have to say what, who, where, you know. And, um, and then, no, I, I don't remember all these people. <laughs> but I enjoyed the movie, so that's, that's the main thing, I enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed the movie, a character pretty much calling back almost every major sub-character throughout their entire MCU. Basically, if you have more than ten lines in the major MCU movie, you got a call back. Uh, even Natalie Portman sort of got a call back, so that was very interesting. And as far as making the list, I was I expected it to be six pages, but I knew if I just said a name of the character, that wouldn't be enough. So I gave a little quick synopsis and everything. And it worked out pretty well also because one of our extended family members, she asked me to send her the list so she can understand the movie better. But yeah, that was very fun. But yeah, there's a lot of casting characters, a lot of callbacks out of, ooh, who's that, who, who's that? And no, seriously, who is that? I, I don't remember you, but that was uh, pretty fun. Yes. Okay, uh, for me, uh, the casting characters, uh, the first time, uh, there were so many that I said, when I see it the second, when I see it again, I'm gonna look for for more characters. And sure enough, oh yeah, there he is, there he is, there she is. And it was like, oh, okay, there's his 15 minutes of fame. There's his 15 minutes of review thing. Yep, I saw um, the, some of the Black Panther characters. Um, Chief, what's his name? Mbaku. Mbaku. Uh, the second time I saw him better than the first time. The first time I, he's like. Whoosh, he was across the scene, but at the same time, I looked for these different characters, and was so and so in it? Yes, they were. And you do have to see the movie at least two times to pick up on all these different characters. 
and it was really a, a super duper callback of characters, and they were in character in the battle scene. That was very nice. Also, I like the uh, the way they aged and or de-aged some of the characters. Like Captain America, they did a beautiful, magnificent job of aging him at the end. He really looked old. He did not look made up old. He really looked naturally old. So much so, the first time I said, who's that? Is that Captain America? And the second time I said, yes, it was. But they did a beautiful job of him. And the other hand, um, what's his name again? Doctor. Uh, Hank Pym, Michael Hank, Douglas. Michael Douglas. Michael <laughs> Douglas, Michael Douglas character, when they de-aged him, woo, I said, look at all that hair! <laughs> Ooh, they really de aced him, and um, that, that was fun to see too, but they did a very good job. Um, make, the makeup department did a very good job with the aging or de aging of the characters. And to, with Captain America, it looked natural. Mm -hmm. It didn't look made up. Yeah, you like Captain America also, right? Right, I like Captain America also. And, um, that's another reason when I went to see the movie a second time, I was going to say, now, when did that part come in? And I was really looking at the movie just to see that part also to see how he aged because the makeup was so good. And then um, when they got to that part and it was sort of like towards the end of the movie and I was like, boy, they got that fast. And that's what I mean by the movie seeming to go by so fast. That means I really enjoyed it. Well, this topic here is sort of just a big buffet of a uh, smaller topics when it comes to the uh, individual characters and uh, the big battle scene and just the hodgepodge of what happened when and where. Uh, just like the big battle, there's this big hodgepodge of all the like, things going on at once. This is sort of a big bundle of topics of things going on at once. So one uh, thing you liked about, uh, a couple things about, about, about Captain Marvel, right? Yes, well, I like the way Captain Marvel, um, uh, hair was different in the big battle scene than it was when um, at the, uh, early in the movie, uh, it looked nice for short uh, for short hair. Get girls, I think it's gonna give girls with short hair uh, something, someone to look up to. Well, Captain Marvel had her hair short, and look what she did. But uh, you still recognize it basically with the long hair. But that that uh, short hair was really a nice touch. Mm. Uh, and uh, I liked um, the comment she made when War Machine asked her, you know, where she been, and she said, uh, you know. This planet was not the only one with trouble, with problem. So she has to be in a lot of places on time, you know. And which to me, it helps me understand, and I think it will help other people understand that everything doesn't happen on Earth. Earth is not the only planet with problems. Mm -hmm. Other planets have problems too, and uh, she was helping them as well. I like that. But on the flip side, for me, uh, like you didn't see the Captain Marvel solo movie, right? No. no. But I did. So I'm frustrated, wondering, okay, fine, you've been this uh, intergalactic vigilante for like the past, what, 20 years, and you somehow never run into uh, Thanos or any of his goons or his children or anything like that. Was, I, I imagine the word would have gotten out that, hey, there's this guy killing off half the population. Could you come help them out? So I was a little frustrated about that. Or another thing I was frustrated about this movie was that it pretty much ruins Thor's individual movies, because in Thor's individual movie, he starts as this arrogant prince who just wants to have fun and adventure, and then by the uh, third movie, he's finally matured, he doesn't even need Mjolnir anymore to really use his powers, and he's ready to be king, even Loki recognizes him as king and is wonderful, and now we're back to Thor just wanting to be an adventurer, giving up his throne to Valkyrie. Now, I will say, uh, fat, lazy, will <laughs> Thor. I like that. I liked it. <laughs> I, yeah, I liked it also. Yeah, I didn't like it. For, for, for pure comedic effect, I yeah. liked it. Mm -hmm. But as far as, and it makes sense that someone who essentially dropped the ball, who could have saved the entire universe, screwed up. It wouldn't make sense that uh, he would fall into depression. But still, the whole, if all of his movies are about making him prepare for King, and now we just toss that to the side. He's just going to be an adventure again. That frustrated me. Another thing that frustrated me, she mentioned uh, uh, you know, the, the little girls and things. There's this wonderful girl power moment in the big battle where all the female heroes get together to help uh, Captain Marvel uh, get through this wave of goons. Now, on one hand, that doesn't make any sense because Captain Marvel just blasted through a warship. She could blast her way through a warship and the truth she can get through a couple hundred goons. The other thing is, all these wonderful females are there except for Black Widow, who's 
dead. And it's like, well, not all this girl power, but the girl that started it all isn't part of it. That just frustrated me. Yeah, that, that was a nice poster scene. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice poster scene. It's a cool moment, but I'm just thinking, Black Widow's not there. She should be there. She should be in the forefront. So that frustrated me. Or even the big fight with the heroes and Thanos. It's like, you know, Thor in the previous movie just threw Stormbreaker one time and, and uh, Thor had, uh, not Thor, Thanos had the Infinity Gauntlet and he was still defeated with that one big throw. But now we have this big old movie with this giant fight. It's a cool fight. It's an amazing fight. But it's like, we just needed one move in the first movie, so that was just a little frustrating. But yeah, but there are a lot of movie parts, a lot of choreography, a lot of things going on. So, you know, some were good, some were bad, some were frustrated, some were cool. Uh, did you have any thoughts on particular characters or battles or anything like that? <clears throat> the um, part with um, they could pick up Thor's hammer, I always thought Thor was the only one that was able to pick up his hammer. Um, so that part confused me. Um, so, but all the other battles, you know, I thought, thought it was fun. Like I said, I went to have fun, and it was fun. Um, so I can't get upset too much about, because I, to me, I was, I was telling my son about, you know, I was raised on things like Bugs Bunny, and where he got shot, and then all of a sudden, the next thing he's walking around again, and he gets pummeled, and then the next thing he's walking around again, so. That's what I was raised on, so um, these superhero movies is sort of like that to me. I just go to enjoy it if it makes any kind of sense, it doesn't bother me. So um, if it makes nonsense, it doesn't bother me. So I just enjoy it. <laughs> so with the movie, like in game, there's lots of things going on. There's lots of characters, lots of story points, lots of moments, and there's plenty of topics that we just can't have uh don't have the time to d dive into for uh, for instance like the part that um tony stark didn't get a chance to say goodbye to happy on screen maybe he said goodbye to him um on a film or a tape or something like he did to his daughter but i still would have liked to have seen it and say it because happy was there for him through thick and thin and everything else and i kind of was sad about that and, um the thing that frustrated me was that i didn't know who the characters were, so even with this list, I had to come home afterwards and read it. I said, oh, that's who that was, that, that's who that was, that's who that was, that's who that was. Mm -hmm. So um, that part is frustrating, but still, even without knowing who the characters were, I was still able to enjoy the movie. And myself, I enjoyed the movie very much. As I mentioned, I'm heavily invested in things, so there, there are a lot of things I could dissect and nitpick and worry about where the same time there things I loved and highlighted and everything going on. But the big thing was the blatant disrespect to past time travel movies, especially Back to the Future. You can't disrespect Back to the Future and then use stuff from Back to the Future. And the reason why people mention Back to the Future so much is because it's the gold standard of time travel stories. So that's why, as wonderful and spectacular and amazing and weird and crazy as this movie was, you disrespect time, time travel and back to the future, you get a lower grade. So that's why my grade is a B plus, whereas... My grade was an A because I was thoroughly, I mean thoroughly upset that there was no in, in scene at the end of the movie. I just could not smile. I did not like that. I did not like. I did not like it. But the second time there was an end scene, and I went home very happy. The first time. <laughs> <laughs> and my grade was an A plus because um, it was a three-hour movie, and I enjoyed it, and I didn't fall asleep. I was able to stay awake the whole time, so I know that I enjoyed it um, for that reason alone, and also. The uh, children that were in the audience, that uh, they were also quiet, and so I mean they enjoyed the movie also. I thought they might be fidgeting after a certain length of time, but that didn't happen either. So the movie was uh, very enjoyable from beginning to end, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. so, so once again, the grades are B plus for me, A for me, and A plus for me. Okay, so that's our review of Avengers Endgame. Thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And of course, I want to say 
appreciation to my fans for joining me on this video review. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight. I am Professor Policy. I am Star Lantern. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.